I'm calling the shots. Guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy. What is up, y'all? So, the new game plan with work uh, is I'm trying to get uh, post maybe four times a week, five times a week onto YouTube and get something to essentially make the tuning portion of my job a more simplistic approach. Um, a lot of you who have worked with me, you see that my conduct online is different than in person, and I want to keep that, uh, that informative aspect alive. So if I'm able to create a bunch of YouTube videos, make a series about education, and make a lot of this uh, a guide for your setup, then maybe we can get a positive outcome. And the main thing is I'm trying to remove a section of hours of my day-to-day -day life that is repeating. And if I publish it to where it is something viewable, I can say, look, if you're running into this problem, and if you watch this video for your specific issue, this will walk you through on how to fix that issue. And I think that's really the smart approach here. I think that's something where I gain back quality of life. It's where you gain something that is a viewable learning educational experience and everyone wins because a lot of the stuff that I'm finding is not out there. I'm having to do it. It's costing me a lot of money and the process of getting there is a rough road. You know, whether it's through how I built my car, the machinists I've used, the engine builders I've used, so on and so forth, electrical, anything, right? Or simply tuning stuff, you know, calibration and, and how I want you to set up your car to make it reliable and good. So, as I switch hands, um, what's behind me is, you probably see from the box right there, my two... Yes, I have two, Garrett G42 1200 Compact and G14, I'm sorry, G42 1450 um, that I have for the first gen. And why would I have two turbos? Okay, this is a very, I guess it's a simple thing to me, but it's a, I always try to present information to where anyone can say, here is your setup. I want to have so much tangible information and so much data on this car, my first gen, that you're able to say, this turbo came in at this RPM, had this airflow, had this air temp. Every single data point will be measured. And what's better than having it on one turbo is on two. So I'll show you guys what these turbos look like. Um, I have relatively large hands but you will see how large a G42 1450 is for a, a two rotor car and why I think it's gonna work very well. So with a rotary that breathes very, very well, like a semi peripheral port half bridge, like what I have for my car, and I have a second motor coming for it, which is in the works right now. Uh, it's done by a second engine builder who I think is delightful to work with and I'm very happy. Um, the airflow of that engine, of a two rotor, is so much and the exhaust pulses are so strong that you're running out of turbine flow on even the new highly efficient G42 platform. Um, what I mentioned to a few Garrett engineers at SEMA and you know, previously before before these were even out you know before the g-series launched uh back when it was a full race as i mentioned i said the ratio we need of turbine wheel the wheel itself to compressor needs to be roughly 20 percent more if not more than that on the turbine side to balance things out so what i'm going to show here even though this is 77 percent efficient turbine wheel, because I have one disassembled to show you guys the shaping, is 
this is still going to be choked on the turbine side of the turbo. So I'll show you guys what I have here. I'll go through a few things, kind of do a little compare contrast. You can see what I have planned. So let's take a look. All right. So first off, let's see if I can get this zoomed in and cleaned up here. Get you a little bit less lighting. There we go. This is the G42 1200 compact. It's got a speed sensor port. It's got pressure. This is a two and a half inch right here. And this is a 73 millimeter inducer. Okay. So if you want to compare it to a, um, I guess the closest thing I can think of would be like an EFR 9280 is very, very similar in sizing. Okay. That's, that's going to be the closest competitor to this in the performance world beyond, uh, of course, a precision. Now, this is their newer design on the turbine wheel. And you can see there's a few things here that are a little bit different, right? They've got some webbing here for strength. If I can get you guys to get cleaned up. There we go. Got some webbing for strength. The EFRs have this area down here fully enclosed, which is what creates such a high um, efficiency platform and they have very large flappers and you can see the profile is oh, let's see if I can get the angle it is a very interesting flat out and then a dip and then a come back up so if I go to this one, you can see it a little bit better. There we are. And the EFRs, by contrast, are pretty squared off. Uh, and then they have a much more aggressive curvature to them. So it kind of cups the air. This having a softer release here. So in other words, this angle is flatter than like a very curved or rather curved like this angle, right? So if this were coming in here and then curling way down over here, that's much closer to like the EFR style. That captures and holds heat bore, okay? That is a little bit less beneficial when you're trying to get pure flow out of something like this. So where the EFR, I feel, fails a little bit is, you know, it's cupping and holding the heat in into the blades where this I feel can release it better by being a more direct flatter approach um, then you've got this new the fact that this is uh, their new technology with 1050 degrees Celsius um, this can handle higher heat the turbine housing that you'll see this one this is actually the turbine housing I'm going to put onto this turbo and then I have a 1.28 T4 divided going onto this turbo those are um, those are designed to be much higher heat I feel this gear could be well into the 40 pounds of boost the EFRs you're pretty much ending at about 30 PSI because the Gamma TI wheel from them is very delicate and therefore can expand to a point of explosion. I think that's the best word for it. So let's go off to this guy and I'll kind of explain first off. Let's do one of these, right? Yeah, this is my full hand. And then here, right, it's quite a bit, it's 28 millimeters larger, going to this one. This is going to be mated to the 128, as I mentioned. This is going to be mated to a 1.15 AVR. And so the idea is I would create a full tune on the 1200 compact 
the 1.15, set to 25 pounds, something like that. Perfect for mountain usage. It'll probably make 600 horsepower, be stupid reliable, spool up a lot faster, and it has the same turbine size as this one. This, I'm not going to mind a little bit more lag. It's gonna be designed for more peak. Oh, technical difficulties, that's gonna be fun. All right, well, for someone who doesn't like editing film, here we go. So the 79 millimeter of the G42-1450, the power band is going to be coming on a little bit later than the 73, right down here, except for the turbine, oh shit, the turbine itself is what's our real limiting factor, okay? So our back pressure on this one, when we try to bring up the boost more, even though we have a larger A over our turbine housing, it's still going to be our limiting factor by the turbine wheel. I honestly think I can get 800 wheel horsepower out of this turbo, and I'm gonna try. We'll see right away. And I've got another surprise for you guys on that one, so I'm gonna flip this camera around and show you exactly what I'm gonna talk about. This must not be my night. <laughs> Now, round three, so I'm going to do another surprise here, which I hope this doesn't step on too many people's toes, but I'm going to have an A to B test of Engine Builder A versus Engine Builder B, and I'm pretty sure the best way of doing that is not saying who did what, and just being like, hmm, here's airflow data. They have the exact same request for both. I have half bridge on, so secondary essentially is bridged. The primaries are a street port on both motors. They're both studded. They both have the same compression ratio. They're both series five 13 BT blocks. And I want to make a head to head comparison on two turbos, right? So we'll do essentially four tunes and then present the data and say, look, here is the airflow of this tuner, I'm sorry, the airflow of this engine with the same tuner for each one of them. And I will optimize and I'll send the data back to the engine builders and say, you guys are both amazing, which I guarantee they will. They're amazing people. And it'll be to the point of saying, we've got this hard data. This is where so-and-so did better do you want this? Do you want any specifics as to what was changed? Because they were both requested the exact same, right? Of course, I will not release any information beyond this engine flowed this much differently, but it would be very cool to experiment and show it on two different turbos for myself requesting one singular thing for the engine as being, you know, I want to be a streetable 13BT with AC power steering, all this stuff, and then have a monster top end. Because why not? Life is too short. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, hope you guys like the video. I'm gonna try to get this together. I guess I have to edit for once instead of doing a single clip. But that's life. That's it, baby. See you guys in the next one. Cheers. Calling the shots, guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy.